the risk priority number RPN and FMEA identifies the opportunities for failure or failure modes in each step of the process. Each failure mode gets a numeric score that quantifies A likelihood that the failure will occur, B likelihood that the failure will not be detected and C the amount of harm or damage the failure mode may cause to a person or to equipment. The product of these three scores is the risk priority number RPN for that failure mode. The sum of the RPNs for the failure modes is the overall RPN for the process. As an organization works to improve a process, it can anticipate and compare the effects of proposed changes by calculating hypothetical RPNs of different scenarios. Just remember that the RPN is a measure for comparison within one process only. It is not a measure for comparing risk between processes or organizations. Risk priority number RPN is a measure used when assessing risk to help identify critical failure modes associated with your design or process. Formula The risk priority number or RPN is a numeric assessment of risk assigned to a process or steps in a process as part of failure modes and effects analysis FMEA in which a team assigns each failure mode numeric values that quantify likelihood of occurrence, likelihood of detection and severity of impact. The factors that make up the risk priority number are severity, occurrence, detection, severity S. Severity is a numerical subjective estimate of how severe the customer, the next user or end user will perceive the effect of a failure. Occurrence O. Occurrence or sometimes termed likelihood is a numerical subjective estimate of the likelihood that the cause of a failure mode will occur during the design life or during production in the case of a process FMEA. Detection D. Detection is sometimes termed effectiveness. It is a numerical subjective estimate of the effectiveness of the controls to prevent or detect the cause of failure mode before the failure reaches the customer. Let's take a case study. The hospital authority decided to have a clinical risk analysis in a dialysis unit. They used failure mode and effect analysis FMEA model. 1. The hospital authority in coordination with the dialysis unit recorded all the phases and activities in the entire dialysis unit. 2. While doing hazard analysis, they listed all the activity related failure modes and their effects, described control measures, assigned severity, occurrence and detection scores for each failure mode and calculated the risk priority numbers RPNs by multiplying the three scores. Total RPN is calculated by adding the entire single failure mode RPN. 3. Then in a planned way they performed a RPN's prioritization on a priority matrix taking into account the three scores and analyzed failure modes causes, made recommendations and planned new control measures. 4. Further after failure mode elimination or reduction, they monitored the process and compared the resulting RPN with the previous one. They found that their failure modes with the highest RPN came from communication and organization problems. They created two tools to ameliorate information flow as per the findings and scheduled nephrological examinations and changed both medical and nursing workflow. Total RPN value decreased after reorganization. Step 5 developing and implementing an action plan to redesign the process. 
Failure modes with high RPNs are probably the most important parts of the process on which to focus improvement efforts. Failure modes with very low RPNs are not likely to affect the overall process very much, even if eliminated completely, and they should therefore be at the bottom of the list of priorities. Use FMEA2. Plan actions to reduce harm from failure modes. Evaluate the potential impact of changes under consideration. Monitor and track improvement over time. Senior doctor came to meet the head of the hospital authority to discuss on a serious issue. So, recently one major fault occurred in the hospital. Why? What happened? Tell me. 45-year-old woman developed with a large body habitus, thus underwent for angiography with sedation. As per the procedure, the technician went to get stretcher. When the technician returned to the patient, the nurse got involved in some other work. The technician rolled the patient onto her side to place the slide board beneath her. The patient failed to pull herself and fell on the floor. Oh no, we should investigate about it and plan and implement appropriate action to reduce the harm. Absolutely sir, I will ask my staff to investigate immediately about it. Doctor, have you investigated the case? What have you identified? Yes sir. Our team has found that the accident happened with the patient in post-sedation and cognitive deficiency condition. The patient was in altered mental status and no safety strap were used. Narrow exam table was used and no coordination of team activity was found. Patient had large body habitus and was unaware of her own limitations. Apart from that, the patient was not instructed regarding the transfer procedure. Fine. Now I will ask. FMEA team to develop and implement the action plan to reduce such fault in the hospital. So, we have developed some action plans to reduce the risk. They are, first, hospital staff should explain the procedure to patient. Second, they should arrange all the transfer equipments before starting the procedure. Third, the nurse should place the stretcher next to the procedure table with wheels locked. Fourth, they have to lock and level the procedure table with stretcher. Fifth, there should be adequate staff to move the patient. Sixth, the transfer process should be synchronized and staff should secure safety rails of stretcher in upright lock position. We should implement these actions immediately in the hospital. Yes, of course. This is how FMEA was implemented for removing failure modes. The effectiveness of FMEA performance was measured by what happens when the product or process goes live. Step 6. Monitoring, Sustaining, Sharing, and Re-evaluating the Improvement In an ever-changing and rapidly advancing healthcare system, there will always be new high-risk processes that can be analyzed and modified by using FMEA. This process is a continuous process. Once team members become facile with the FMEA process, their skills can be used to identify additional opportunities and to share their experience as new staff members are exposed to and trained in this methodology. Advantages of Failure Mode and Effects Analysis FMEA If the FMEA is executed properly, it delivers many benefits. These include Shorter time to market Early identification and eradication of potential product process failure modes Improved validation process Improved product process quality, reliability and safety Reduced development time Fewer late changes Increased customer satisfaction. Documented evidence of due care. Improved company image and competitiveness. Advantages of Failure Mode and Effects Analysis FMEA. The various benefits of FMEA include Improves designs for products and processes with high reliability. 
increased safety, enhanced customer satisfaction, better quality, saves cost by decreasing development time and redesign cost, decreasing warranty cost, decreasing waste, non-value added operations, contributes to the development of control plans, testing requirements, optimum maintenance plans, reliability growth analysis and related activities. Cost benefits associated with FMEA are usually expected to come from the ability to find out failure modes earlier in the process, when they are less expensive to address. Financial benefits are also derived from the design improvements that FMEA is expected to facilitate, including reduced warranty cost, increased sales through improved customer satisfaction, etc. The FMEA procedure is a highly effective way to assess processes, services or products. It is as valuable for revealing areas needing improvement as it is for guiding the development of new processes. It is a logical, structured way to find out the areas of concern while minimizing development time as well as cost. It's also valuable when the intent is to apply a particular, typically successful process of one product or service to another. It has proven to be an effective way to find out how to improve areas where performance might be weak, such as sales or customer satisfaction ratings or high expense to income ratios. One of the most important benefits of FMEA is that it enables early identification of single failure points and systems interface problems that can obstruct success and impact safety. Limitations of Failure Mode and Effects Analysis FMEA. For all the benefits, the FMEA does have some limitations also. For example, issues beyond team members' knowledge aren't likely to be detected or resolved, constituting to unknown issues. Furthermore, if the team forgets to list failure modes, then they'll be ignored. In both cases, the upshot is a failure waiting to occur. One more limitation is a function of the FMEA's foundation for prioritizing failure modes according to their risk. This won't remove the failure modes and may need other actions outside of the FMEA and the team carrying it out. If proper attention is not given to the details of issues, many failure modes will be expected to be missed. On the other hand, too many details may make the analysis a daunting task. The solution is to break the process down into manageable segments. Moreover, a pitfall many organizations encounter is in failing to recognize that the FMEA is not a static model. For successfully managing risk, the FMEA should be regularly updated as new potential failure modes are identified and corresponding control plans are developed. FMEA has become essential to any production process and is extensively considered an improvement over traditional risk analysis which treats each potential failure in isolation. Still, it's not a remedy. It is an assessment tool and not one that is designed to eliminate problems. It will produce the best results when supplemented with other project management tools to see the control plans through. Some of the other limitations are human errors and hostile environments are overlooked frequently. Because the technique examines individual faults of system elements taken singly, the combined effects of coexisting failures are not considered. Failure probabilities can be hard to obtain. Obtaining, interpreting and applying those data to unique or high stress systems introduces uncertainty which itself may be hard to evaluate. Sometimes FMEA is done only to satisfy the altruistic urge or need to do safety.